So you guys have been asking for it for a long time. You know, you got you guys, you know, collo- like jokingly call it the uh, you know, the girlfriend guide, right? Guys who wants the girlfriend guide. And um I started writing some stuff up, but I realized it might be easier to just uh, you know, just drop it on you guys, drop my years of experience, um, and ultimately explain what it what is going on with women um, that, you know, that I think a lot of guys just don't get. And I can tell you why. It's because it's very hard to understand something that's not yourself. And so a lot of guys think of women through the lens of what a guy thinks about women. And that's actually kind of weird because they've already missed the first step. And this is something that most guys, it sounds, it's going to sound silly, but most guys don't get this, is that more fundamentally than a woman is that a woman is a human being, surprisingly enough. And so that means anything that is relevant to the human nature is identical between man and woman. That's the big secret that a lot that successful men, men who are successful with women understand that what men who aren't don't. Right? Is that they keep trying to figure out women as if they're somehow alien to the human nature. And and once you go down that road, you start buying into all the weird like self-help book style stuff where women men are from mars women are from venus that was that you guys are probably too young for that one but um like you guys start you start buying into that sort of thing and (laughs) oh yeah i mean yeah you know that one you're a little bit older so you know that one but it's um so you have to start there and now what this means is that you have a um, sort of starting point for figuring out what is going on. And it turns out that what women find attractive is pretty much what guys find attractive. And why is that? Well, it turns out because you're both human beings. But the way in which this attractiveness comes about is actually the big crux of the issue that I think a lot of guys don't understand, especially desperate guys. And we'll get to that in a, in a minute. Um, Women find, you know, physically, physical attraction, you know, mental fortitude, mental development, you know, like education, scholastic development, um, sociable, abil- you know, social ability, social intelligence, um, you know, good morality, right? Virtues, a lot of virtues, uh, drip, you know, passion, uh, drive, discipline. I mean, these are all things that a man finds in, inter- you know, inter- in, uh, attractive in a woman, right? You you know if she's pretty if she's smart she's well spoken she's you know she has all the virtues right generous kind you know she she knows what she wants um you know it's like things like this like this is all you know it's, it's so <laughs> like when you when you once you work through it realistically it's it's less mysterious right that what men find attractive women find attractive and so you know you have to you know this gives you some insight but that's like that's not the hard part i mean that's the hard part for a lot of guys right they keep trying to figure out what the the magic you know the secret the secret sauce is right what's the secret button that if i just if i just you know hit this button it'll all be fixed here's where guys don't understand and there's there's sort of two ideas that are running in parallel hill here women and this is so now we're gonna get into the differences right women view people in a more holistic way than men do. So women view men holistically in a way men simply don't. And now I'm gonna expand on this and it's gonna sound bad and maybe it is, right? Women are less quick to dehumanize other humans than men are. Men are very fast to dehumanize other people and break them down into like their components. This is a very natural tendency, right? Um, and it's something men have to deal with. Like, this is something men have to overcome. It's a very natural 
problem that that men generally have is that they're very fast to do human and so this is how come um i mean you know it's how come men tend to how do i say this for a lot of desperate men, you'll notice that the kind of major criteria for them in their interest in a girl is if she's attractive. That just doesn't really happen with most women, right? Women look at a guy and they're looking for the whole package, right? They're, they're, at no point do they just look at a guy and go, here's this one attribute and that's what matters, right? And so... That just doesn't happen. It just, it's, 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 so this is how come, you know those like studies where they uh, take women and they show them a picture of a guy in a bio and it turns out women will find a man more attractive if it says he makes a lot of money? Well, the idea here is that it's because as she gets more information about him, she's evaluating him as she, in a holistic sense. There's no trait that just, start, that just dominates and then she goes... You know, oh yeah, that's all that matters. Because for a lot of guys, you find this, and and I don't know why a lot of guys. I I'm not saying guys are liars, but I feel like they're, you know, putting the old English on it when when they deny it to me. Like I'll be like, it's just how men are. What, like they a lot of men, it's you know they put a lot of they put a premium on how attractive a woman is. That's like the first thing they notice, and it's a major factor. And a lot of guys will like deny this for some reason. I don't know. To me, that always <laughs> it just feels like they're. You know, I don't know. It feels like they just don't want to be open about this sort of reality situation. And why is this? It's because men uh, are we're fa men are faster to dehumanize other people. And I think I know why, by the way. I think it's because men are the aggressive political sex and women are the household sex, as Aristotle says. And... The start of all violence is first dehumanizing the person you're bringing violence against. Because you're, you're not going to get any violence started if you're sitting there thinking about what, how they're a person. I mean, love it or hate it, that's just the reality of it, right? That's like how if you study you know, military history, what, well, how do you get the, the people to start fighting? You first have to find a way to dehumanize the other side. Otherwise, you know, by the nature of empathy, why would you, why would you want to hurt them? And so I think because men are the political sex, right? I think this is why men have this problem where they want to, their first instinct is to dehumanize other people. And I think also this is why, you know, advertising handsome, attractive men does not have the same effect on women as advertising with, you know, you know, attractive women has the effect on men, right? Like it just, the, 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 it doesn't work the same way. And it's because that's just not how attractiveness works. Like it works that way for, for men, right? Men, you know, look at some, look at another person and, and they get all the pleasure of attractiveness because they're able to essentially dehumanize, dehumanize a, a woman very easily just down into her looks. But uh, it, for women, it's, it's much less natural to do that. And so this is how come, you know, you don't, if you, it, it's kind of like the joke, uh, all the like fashion models that wear skimpy clothes, is that to make men buy their product? No, it's to make women want to buy their product. <laughs> so it's like, it, it's, it's advertising with scantily clad men just doesn't work in the same way because that's just not how women, you know, deal with these things. And of course I'm speaking in broad generalities because you can always find women who are very disordered, right? Um, you know, women who sleep around or uh, gold diggers, as they say, right? That's like a woman who's overly attached to the idea of how much money a guy makes. Um, stuff like that, right? Like, so you can always find super disordered situations. But in broad sense, this this is just sort of how it works. Women, women are attracted to men in a holistic way, while men tend to uh, break down a woman into her attributes and then start, start has to sort of put them back together. This is actually a major reason why the church makes you wait for several months to get married, right? Because uh, in, in essence, they're, they're asking the man to put the pieces of the woman back together in his mind that he's spread out in his mind, right? Um, and I think this also is why men think of things syst systemically, where, while, while women don't, they tend to think of things particularly. 
it, it's it's just a trend. It's just this is all sort of connected, right? Um, men want to sort of systematize, quantify things, break them down into into sort of sciences, and, and women just don't have that instinct in the same way. And this is how and so the, you know this is the whole connection. This is the whole picture, and so. Um, going from there, um, what, what you have to start understanding then is that for men, and this is something I find with a lot of desperate men, like I have to tell a lot of guys, uh, you have to date a lot of girls and, or you have to be ready to. And the reason is because a lot of guys think that I just got to get her to say yes and the job is over. No, no, no. You don't understand. You have to actually like being around her too. She has to like being around you and you have to like being around her. And a lot of guys seem to like not appreciate that. They think like the first girl who lets me date her, I'm just going to marry that one. Like there's no concept that they themselves can pick their spouse as well. Like it has to go back and forth. And I think this is sort of where a lot of like desperate men go wrong is that they're totally ready to just sort of accept whatever they can get. But no woman wants to date a guy like that. She wants to date a guy who knows what he wants, you know, and he's discerning because he has a lot of things. Like, she's looking to conform as much as the guy wants to conform, so to speak. And a, and a desperate guy is willing to just do anything. And that's really unattractive, right? Um, and so, so you know, you know, once you understand that, it's like, yeah, I mean, I just, I just had to kind of throw that out there. You have to, a lot of, like I said, this is why desperation is not just bad for attractiveness, but it's bad for your own self-interest too. You're not going to make the right decisions. Um, and this is because guys are willing to break a person down into their constituent parts and, and think of it that way. And for a lot of guys, you know, the, it really boils down to, is she hot enough? <laughs> like it sounds stupid, but that's what it comes down to. Is she, is what it comes down to. Is she hot enough? Oh, if she's ugly, I'm not dating her. Oh, she's hot? Okay, I'll date her and then just do whatever she wants because I'm desperate. It's the, it's so, it's like the least healthy mentality, but it's something you run into. Um, and so the the guy has to, and this, like I said, I brought this up because the waiting period thing, right? Why do we put the waiting period? It's because they want to make sure the guy, and it tends to be a guy problem, is not just he's broken the girl down into her constituent parts and he's in love with how she looks. And they say, well, you got to wait six months because this waiting six months is going to agitate you and it's going to force you to put the pieces back together and look at the girl as a human and then actually decide, do I actually like her? Right. And, th and then you go and then you realize if you do or don't. Um, but that's the sort of important thing, right, is that the guy has to work to view her as a whole person, uh, whereas where the girl's attractiveness starts with the guy being viewed as a whole person and, and then going from there. So, so in, in a sense, the guy understands the girl very quickly as parts and has to put it together to understand the whole, whereas the girl understands the guy as a whole immediately. And then you just want to talk about this is why you read in romance, right? That girls want to explore and discover the man, right? She now understands him as the whole, but now her journey is the exact opposite of the man. She's now moving from the whole to the individual parts. And that's what she ends up finding interesting in the guy. You're right. The, this is when girls say he has, he's so deep, he has a lot of depth. That's what she means. As she explores you in the particular parts of you, she starts understanding more your passions, your hobbies, your desires, your thoughts, your view of the world. And if there is think, substance there, right, like there's interesting substance there, she's going to become extremely satisfied with what she discovers. Whereas, the, like I said, the guy has to, has to reconstruct her. It's the exact opposite. He understands the parts first, right? And then understands the whole. She understands the whole and then discovers the parts. And so moving on from there. So under, so getting that women view men holistically, this also means how to be attractive is in some ways um, very different than for, for men than it is for women. So... A lot of guys make the mistake of um, what's that term in like RPGs where you just dump all your your stuff your stuff into one stat stacking where you just like try to max out one stat really hard. 
in in many ways <coughs> right and so in, in in many ways this is where a lot of guys go wrong is that they fall under the impression that there's one element that is super important beyond all else and they start trying to focus all on that and this actually hurts them because it unbalances them whereas the woman is looking at the man holistically if the the, the guy starts sacrificing all the parts of himself for the sake of you know one attribute what's going to happen she's going to be is she's going to she's going to she might be attracted to him at first right this happens a lot if say a guy is really attractive she'll go on a date with him but then the moment she starts talking to him and realizing that he's an emotional basket case or he's really vain or he's not that interesting or he can't you know he, he can't he doesn't have any direction in his life she's going to drop him like a hot potato right and so you know it, it's kind of funny how guys self-sabotage a lot like that like i said you know guys who, who are very bad at this um and, and there's also another problem it's that because women view men in a holistic system or a holistic way the negative attributes are more it's more important to remove negative attributes than it is to try to increase your good side this is super important so um now this actually moves me into the next point i wanted to make which is that women don't try to systematize things or quantify things instinctively like men do you know the whole like how guys like to rate women's attractiveness from like in numbers right like zero to ten or, or whatever however they like this is just not really something a woman does at least not naturally right you have to sort of goad women into it but even then they, they seem weak on it and the reason is because the, it's it's not really how women you know aerosol talks about this right if it's a quantity or if it's a uh what was the other one magnitude it, it's it's you know women don't think in terms of these quantities they don't have to systematize everything so for women when it comes to attractiveness there's really only like four three or four real like levels right you can either be ugly right that's where your attractiveness is repulsive in some way you can you know be normal which means that you're you're you have enough attraction that it's not an issue anymore right or you can be, you know, decent looking. These are guys who might take a little bit better care of themselves stuff. And so this is like attractive, right? Like people, they might be in good shape or something. And now it's a plus, right? She finds you attractive physically. Um, and then there's sort of like some guys who are just, you know, very, very, very handsome, beautiful people. <clears throat> That's pretty rare, but like, how do I put this? the way a girl reacts to someone who's attractive for, or someone who's like physically attractive compared to how they react to like a truly beautiful uh like handsome man you you, you will never make the mistake of 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 like confusing the two the way they react is physiological i'm totally serious if a man is super super attractive you will literally see her physiologically react to seeing him, being near him, compared to a guy who's just attractive. Um, but the point of this is that they don't, because they don't really view men uh, in these sort of quantified ways, they don't, it's not like there's like a zero to 10 scale where they're like, mm, it needs to be you know 6.1 or high. that's just not how they think. What you need to concern yourself with is just not being ugly. <laughs> You, th like it's more important like if you were to say is it more important to go from being not ugly to normal or to normal to attractive it's it's like 10 times more important to go from being not ugly to normal than it is to be normal than become attractive like it's that much of a difference and this is this is uh what i mean when i talk about that where it's like you know it's this holistic system it's more important to sort of smooth out any of these big problems because those big problems are going to be the, is going to highlight is going to be much more noticeable for her than the fact that you know you're a little bit better looking than everyone if that makes sense so you know keep that sort of thing in mind 
it's it's better to focus on these negative aspects and fix them than it is to sort of try and become you know fabio or something um, well that's what i mean this is why women have deal breakers and men have to figure it out it's because it, it's like you know you, you, like imagine a device you're using and like you know like like i don't know like some sort of you know i, I can't think of something like um you know some sort of power tool where you know the the trigger sticks sometimes for the guy right because guys break things down and, and focus on sort of the individual aspects like imagine you had a drill press where where the uh you know the um you know the um uh what do you call it the, the vertical movements the, what's it called you know the um why am i blanking on this the, yeah, thank you. The lever that you that you you know rotate to move it up and down. Imagine if that stuck really bad. For a guy, if it gets the job done, he's happy with it, right? Like I'll worry about it later. I'll fix it later because he's broken it down into its constituent parts, and he's figured the most important thing about the drill press is that I can drill a hole in things as I need it to. A woman wouldn't think it that way. The, this the busted lever would ruin the whole thing because, and this is how come women like when you're trying to sell women products, you focus on all the features it has. Whereas for men, you want to, if you're advertising to men, you just want to focus on how good of a job it does at the one thing. It's because that's what men are, that's how men, that's how men observe these things compared to how women observe things, right? And this is what's important in attractiveness, right? You, you need to, you need to be the whole package without any sort of blind spots. Whereas conversely, right? Why is it that women, like a lot of women instinctively know just becoming more attractive is going to help them out because a lot of men sad to say will will just go well that's good enough for me she's attractive and she's not she's not a jerk so i guess that's good enough for me <laughs> you know uh, and that's the dehumanization part right like it's weird how many guys will get in serious relationships with women that they effectively don't like but the woman's attractive and she's well off and you know she he doesn't and he she's not that bad to interact with and that's good enough for him right but for a woman that's just not how it is the, the, the guy has to it's better she focuses on the whole picture and um so this is why i tell you know this is why you have to focus on you know becoming obsessed with any one thing about yourself is going to create problems right like you know the the look maxing joke right trying to become as attractive as possible for a guy is a complete waste of time. It's probably going to hurt you because not only is it going to, you know, not get you what you want, it's going to hurt you in other ways. You're, it's I've never seen anyone do that without it becoming neurotic. Like it introduces vanity and women will pick up on these big vices and it will repel them very quickly. Um, and so, yeah. So, so that's sort of the big lesson I was trying to get at there is that it's more important to focus on your negative qualities and, and fixing them than it is to worry about, uh, you know, really excelling at all these other qualities. And this is also how come you often find very commonly um, women in like, because a lot of guys who get obsessed with looks, right? The, the, they'll often be confused why attract, physically attractive women will very often be in serious relationships with men who are significantly less physically attractive and it's because the woman is not judging him solely on well is he a really attractive guy or not it's it's the whole thing is he you know does he have these strong morals does he have a strong sense of discipline a strong sense of focus a strong sense of you know mental development you know mental development and culturalization is he sociable is does he is he interesting is he fun to be around like do i enjoy myself around him um, you know, do, does he have a stable job? You know, does he have a career? Like, is in because what, what does that really mean? It means is he competent? Uh, does he have any sort of emotional basket case issues? Like, like these are all things that she's concerning herself with, and so him being attractive or not is really just a small piece of the, of the, the you know the whole pie. Um, and so, you know. That, that, that's sort of the big thing there. Um, one more thing I wanted to do before I, we started doing a little back and forth where you guys asked me questions. Um, I wanted to, to tackle this, um, 
sort of meme, right? With this, I call it a confidence meme, where people go, just be confident. I realized a lot of people don't totally understand what that means, because I realized they might not really understand confidence itself either. So, you know, it, 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 it's, it's useless to tell someone to do something if the explanation itself needs more explaining. So, when people mean confidence, there's two ways that you can be confident in, in this sense. There's, you can portray confidence when you have no reason to be confident. And this is bad because this means you are arrogant. And believe it or not, arrogance is, you know, it's one of the most repelling things you can have for a woman. Um, when I was young, I didn't totally understand this because I would, you know, talking to girls and they would say they left a guy because he was too arrogant. And I was like, I didn't understand, you know, I'm like, you know, I'm like 16 years old, right? I'm like, I don't see why that's such a big deal. But it turns out for women, this is a huge problem. Women hate arrogant guys. I don't know why. I haven't thought about it, but it's like the worst thing you could possibly be, it turns out. Um, so what is confidence? Confidence is pro being assertive in the way in which you properly understand you know, your virtues and your, your capabilities. And so when a guy is, comp is confident correctly, it's not the confidence itself that is attractive, right? But it's what it, what it, but it's what it uh, signifies about the man that to really become confident in a good way, there's several things that have to happen first. And these are very attractive. That's, this is why confidence ends up becoming this, you know, it's like a, it's like an aura where it just, it just, it just pulls women in like a magnet. You have to be emotionally stable, right? You have to be emotionally secure. You have to actually be competent, right? You actually have to be good at things that you try in life. You know, you, ha you have that emotional stability. You have a level of self-awareness so that you know exactly who you are and what you can do. And then, you know, you have a level of courage where you're able to project your will into the world around you, confident in yourself because you're secure and you're not emotionally, you know, you're not emotionally wounded in such a way that you're afraid of risk or you're afraid of failure. Like all these things need to come happen for someone to become confident. And so what happens is because of this, there's a very natural tendency for, it's not just women, right? But even men, if a man is confident, he just exudes this sort of magnetic attraction where men want to follow him and women want to be with him, right? Because what is it for a woman to be with a man? It's a woman following a man, right? It's the same thing. It's, this, it's the same activity. And so this is where people come from where they say, well, you got to be confident. That's like the most, one of the best things you can do to get a girl. It's so true, but it, it's not true if you don't understand what it means. Because a lot of, I think a lot of people think it means just don't be shy, <laughs> right? But that's not it at all. Although being shy is bad, right? You, you shouldn't be shy either, but it's, it's, it's more than that. It's actually being a competent person. It's being a, a capable person. It's being a person who isn't wallowing in self-grief or, or you know, self-hatred. You know, he, he's not afraid of loss. He's not afraid of, of risk-taking. He, you know, he has direction in life. He knows where he wants to go. He has the self-discipline to take him there, right? And then what, all these things lead to someone being confident. And this, and this, like I said, this blows the hair back on women. Like, cause it's just, that's, that's everything they're looking for in a guy, right? He's morally, right? Spiritually, you know, personally, right? Emotionally, right? socially, you know, and then actually excellent. And that's what she's looking for because that's the whole package. <laughs> um, and so, you know, ultimately then you might go, wait a minute. So what you're telling me is that being attractive is not a function of its own accord, but it's actually a function of more general human excellence. And that's exactly what the, that's what the big thing is. It's less mystical than a way a lot of people want to think of it. Because a lot of guys want to think, if there's just this one special thing I do, women will be attracted to me. 
Well, it turns out there is one thing you can do, but that one thing is the whole game. It's the whole game of being human, being an excellent human, you know? And so this is both less mystifying and much more difficult than people realize because if you spend your time trying to find the secret, the secret sauce, right? The secret formula for getting a girl, that's all a waste of time. If you instead focused on developing the virtues, being physically excellent, having excellent activity, you know, being excellent at all the activities you do, you know, education, intellectual development, you know, becoming cultured, understanding the arts and the sciences, you know, the literary man, the liberal arts man, sociable, right? Being part of something, being meaningful in your community, all these things. If you do all those, the attraction, you know, is the product. It, it, it comes with it. But at no point can you just become more attractive through some, through some arcane knowledge. That's just not how it works. Because she's not interested in you for your arcane knowledge. She's interested in a guy who's competent, you know, intelligent, fun, interesting, capable, you know. And so that's the big takeaway. That's the big thing. There is no other way. I have to emphasize this because... It, what it does is that a lot of people, I think, a lot of desperate guys want a turnkey solution, right? If I just do this, if I just eat almonds, right? If I just chew tree sap gum, if I just chew, do more sit-ups, this is going to make me more attractive. No, it will not. It will do literally, in fact, it's going to hurt you because all that time you spent doing that, you could have spent time doing something else more important, right? And so... Keep that in mind. It's a general excellence that you're trying. You're trying to become a serious person. Of course, this is what's so funny, right? Is that the serious person, you know, is what you're trying to do, you know, is, is what you're, you're trying to be all along. And the serious man, you know, you, you sort of run into this a lot, right? Where serious men just essentially you know, have, have, have a run at it. They can just, ba they can basically be with whoever they want, you know, and, and, and that's the reason why, because it's universally attractive. So that was what I wanted to bring up about the, the, the confidence meme, but then sort of the big takeaway from all this is that, you know, that's how it is. So, okay. Lay it on me. Throw, hit me with all your questions. Okay, so if the question is, if I focus on being healthy and strong instead of dropping a pound of fat every so often, that part of being a good holistic person instead of being autistic in vain. Um, I mean, well, no, you still haven't gotten it. Like, yes, being healthy and strong is good, but this has to be part of the whole package. You, you have to get your emotional issues under control. You have to get your life situation under control. Um, and so, so you have to sort of keep that in mind. Like, like, I don't think you personally have an issue of not being, you know, in good enough shape or, or things like that. That's not the issue. Like, um, you know, it, it has to be, you, you have to view it in terms of everything else has to be on par. Think of it this way. Here, here's a good way to think of it. Is my, is every part of me as strong as the strongest part of me? If the answer is no, then you have to figure out what you have to do to get that way. Like every part of you should be the strong part. And once you start, the closer you get to that, the more attractive you're going to be to women. So, you know, it, it, that, that's sort of the big, what you should try to focus on. That's, that would be a good way to try to, to look at it. it. Another way of phrasing it is there can't be any weak links. Be it your emotional issues uh, you know, your physical, you know, your physical situation, your, uh, how, your ability to be sociable, your risk taking and stuff like that. The question, the main question I have is how do you convince a woman to date you if your financial career situation is not where you want it to be? Are there any deal breakers? Yeah. So, um, that is a big bad point. 
that is a major problem for a lot of women is if a guy is just in a non-existent financial situation, um, especially as they get older, right? That becomes an, an increasingly important thing. Uh, that said, you know, a lot of times it's not the fault itself is not the problem. It's that people aren't fixing it. Right. Um, like, cause if that was the case, women would never date a guy who's in school, <laughs> but that's obviously not true. People who are in school date all the time. Um, it's, it's not that he's broke right now. That's the problem. It's that he isn't fixing it. Right. Like the guy who's high school dropout, who's just working at, you know, some poorly paying job who just drinks beer all day. It's not that he's poor that's the problem. It's that he doesn't seem to want to do anything about it. He just would rather party. Or I guess I could use a more realistic example, like the the eternal neat, right? Like guys who just, I just want to sit around, consume anime all day. It's not that they're poor that's the problem. It's just that it's very obvious to any woman looking at him that he has no intention to fix that. And, and that's, that's a deal breaker. Like, she's not going to jump in a boat with, with a dude who's just a dud like that. And so, yeah. So, um, there will probably be deal breakers where girls will be like, uh, you know, he's making, you know, minimum wage or whatever. And I'd rather date someone who's successful right now. But realistically, um, if your situation's improving with time, she'll, like you'll find that won't be as big a problem because it's not that you're poor because you're lazy it's just you know you're in school you were dealt a bad hand but you clearly take yourself seriously and you're on the up and up and 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 she'll she'll zero in on that right because everybody loves the comeback story <laughs> question is it wise to find a girl based on base attributes i.e attractiveness and then try to fix undesired attributes in the future so um how do i put this this is what i mean by you need to it's funny it does it the answer to the last question it's if it looks like it could be fixed then it's a go but if you just if you're just coming in cold and the person is i have no intention to change this i don't have any desire to change this and i'm going to resist any attempts to change this you're, you're not going to quote unquote fix that, right? Like this is how come I, I, I make that joke or, or not a joke, but I used to tell people, um, I'd rather, you know, if, you know, it, it would be better to try to date uh, a lukewarm, but, but somewhat dedicated to the concept of the faith Christian than others, because you can actually convert the, you can convert people like that really easily. Right. Because that's like on the way to being fixed, but like, it, it, but you obviously wouldn't want to get married till till they became, you know, Catholic or something. But it's like, you know, there, this is a sort of major thing where you, you don't, don't, don't. It's usually really bad if you think you're gonna like just mold the person to who you want. It's more like there's a point in the middle, and you guys are are gonna meet halfway. And you have to figure out if that halfway point is where you want it to be, right? Um, so, so keep that sort of thing in mind. You're not going to fix things unless it's already changing. But even then, in that case, you might say, that calls into question if I'm fixing anything at all. And that's true. It's not really you. It's them. Because people don't change. You can't force someone to change no matter what, right? So, so keep that sort of thing in mind. If someone... You know, like I said, think of it in that sort of halfway point thing. Because like I said, you're going to be changing to suit their desires as much as they're going to be changing. It's not going to be one-sided. If it is, they're going to get tired and frustrated and bored and they're going to leave. And rightly so, if you're just kind of, you know, essentially just trying to boss them around all day. Right? So keep that sort of thing in mind. Does saving up for something count as trying to improve one's financial situation um yeah i suppose i mean there this isn't i funny enough i think this is why women tend to be better at this is because their first instinct isn't to systematize it isn't to start quantifying things and guys first instinct is to do exactly that but the, but the nature of the nature of the beast in this case is it's a feel thing, right? Everybody's different. Everybody has their own situation. And this is why you date a bunch of people because you're trying to find out 
you're trying to find people that you're interested in, that you guys are hitting it off, and, and you guys can really build something on it, right? You can really build something on the relationship. Um, I think this is one of the problems with guys who, uh, I don't, it's like they're afraid to interact with, with, with women, they're afraid to interact with other people, um, or they think that they're going to like get the right date, the perfect date, just boom, right off the bat. The first girl they date, she's going to be perfect and they're going to get married. That That's like, that's just obscene, absurd to think about. That's just, it's just so, you know, silly. It's really one of the, um, you know, the, the, the more destructive misunderstandings. It, it's, you know, uh, um, you know, go on lots of dates, interact with a lot of women and, and you start, because it, it's important for you to like them not just because they're attractive, but because, you know, as I used to say, they chew with their mouth closed and, and they say interesting things. Like, that's important, <laughs> you know? So just go on lots of dates. And this is, of course, why you have you have to sort of be chill, right? Like, you don't ask girls out on dates like you're going to get married. You ask girls on dates because you want to spend time with them, right? Think of it this way. If one of you came over to my place and said, you know, hey, I want to hang out. Like, let's say you, got, you someone sent me a PM and said, hey, I'm coming to visit and I want to hang out. What you're ultimately doing is saying, I want to spend time together. And of course, right? Because we're friends. That's what you're doing when you ask a girl on a date. I want to spend time with you because I think I might like you. And I think you might like me. And this is why a girl, like, and, and this is why if you're really calm, right? Girls will, just, will go on dates with you. It doesn't mean anything. It's not like... You're getting a date and then it's just like, okay, let's get married. It's not like a job interview. It's, am I someone I want to spend time with? Maybe you are. This is why being interesting, being enjoyable to be around, right? That's really just, being interesting, just a sub a sub category of being enjoyable to be around. That's sort of the major goal because then you start spending more time together and you start, you know, developing a more, a, a deeper relationship and, and you start, oh, okay, maybe we are you know, maybe there is something here. Maybe we should uh, think about, uh, you know, discerning something more here. Um, because the leap from, you know, being, enjoying your time together, it, it, it's not like you sit down and like declare it. It just happens naturally. You just find yourself wanting to be around them more and more and more. And they back to you. They just want to be around you more and more and more. And, and then, and, and this is like, you know, it, it's, it's, you're starting to, conform you know to each other's desires and then and then it turns into you know hey let's like i think something's going on here let's be more serious and, and then it works its way into this is it you know we're we're supposed to be together boom we're getting married but it starts with that really basic concept you know when you ask a girl on a date all you're really asking is do you want to spend time with me because i want to spend time with you and not because it's, like I said, this like weirdo, let's just get married. It's like, I might like you. You seem like a cool person. And then if she thinks you seem like a cool person, then there you go. You got a date. And now you can hang out and see if you guys make each other laugh. You see you guys have a good time. You see, do you see what I'm saying? This, this, it's, it's, it goes back to the first thing I said, right? Where I said, if you understand that a girl is a human, <laughs> then you can treat them like a human, and that's the goal. Is being slightly edgy bad? Um, I mean, it really depends what you mean by that. Because a lot of times when I, I see young people talk about being edgy, they really just mean saying things that are beyond the pale, but in public. Um, that's just really called shamelessness. And that's a, a terrible vice that a lot of people have these days. You should have a well-developed sense of shame in which you don't say things which obviously dishonor yourself by saying them. Um, you know, like just openly letting rip racial, you know, uh, derogatory racial terms or racial, racist, you know, jokes, otherwise bigoted jokes, slurs. Right. That, that's like that's not being slightly edgy. That's just very rude. And, and it's really quite uncouth. Um, it's good for getting a buffoonish laugh out of people. Right. Like people will laugh. Oh, you said the N word. <laughs> but um, it's going to be the quickest way to make people not take you seriously. Um, 
you know that is it's it's so if that's what if that's what is meant by being slightly edgy no that is not a good thing not not just for girlfriends but in life like it's not going to help you um so there's that is dating within a group of question is dating within a friend group usually not a good idea i've heard horror stories of group clubs getting split over relationship issues i've had this happen at work myself when i was basically ignored by my coworkers, her friends after we broke up um yeah it's it's that's sort of a maturity thing um it, it's hard to say because this is why like workplaces discourage sort of like workplace romantic relationships because a lot of people sadly are not very mature right um and so it can be as it, it, it's sort of difficult because a lot of times the most socialization we have is with people we work with and so that's like a, a prime likely, you know, sort of candidate for people to try to date. But what happens is that if people, if the relationship kind of gets too serious too fast and then it like ends abruptly and the person, you know, it, and things just get weird, like, yeah, that's, that's bad. But um, I don't know. I, I can't. It's sort of a, a two-edged sword there, right? Like, coworkers are people you interact with a lot, so there's probably going to be romantic relationships forming. But if it doesn't work out, and you guys both aren't sort of, and, and there's not like a level of a, you know, decorum present, it can end pretty badly, and then things get awkward and hostile, <laughs> which is like the worst thing ever, a hostile work environment. Let's see. Can you help me self-evaluate sometimes so I know what predominant faults I can fix? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I guess I guess we could. Um, but, I mean, ultimately, it's something you have to figure out. Because it would be like if someone tried to evaluate me and said, Okay, well, I got an obvious fault for you. You get super frustrated and impatient and angry with people really easily. That's true. That is a diff problem I have. But that isn't where the fault is coming from. It's something I've, you know, meditated on and, and really introspected on. And it turns out that, you know, this fault is actually not coming from this desire to be short with people, right? It, the, it's actually coming from this, this totally other place, this, you know, uh, you, you know, and this, this totally other unrelated, you know, seemingly unrelated insecurity that most people don't know about. And so, you know, yeah, I, I guess I could help you figure out your faults, but ultimately I can only tell you superficial problems you have. You're the one who has to introspect and reflect and figure out why you behave that way. What are your fears? What are you worried about? You know, because a lot of times there's a lot of things that people have buried inside of them that they can't, they don't ever quite face, right? Like, are you afraid of not being loved because you're not useful, right? Are you afraid of, uh, you know, being weak and you're afraid of lack of security because, you know, you don't, you're afraid of other people, you don't trust people, you know, do, are you afraid of, uh, you know, if you're not pleasant to be around, nobody will care about you. Like th there's like these like deep insecurities that drive people. And if you don't, if you don't look them in the eye, right, you're, you're going to just, you're going to just be sitting there going, oh, well, I'm kind of shy and, I, and I'm trying to fix that, but not realizing, well, what is causing that, right? So, so you'd have to reflect and, and figure that out yourself. <clears throat> okay, question. What is sex, as in male and female stuff, metaphysically speaking? People use the words female, male, nature, which seems inaccurate. That's exactly right. Because man has one nature, and that nature is human nature. Right, because if you remember, nature is the potency acting upon the thing, which causes it to continue being that thing moment to moment and wanting to be that thing. So, what is female and male? Well, this is actually super duper interesting philosophically because Aristotle actually thought it was a material difference um, that you are male or female in a material sense because of your body but not spiritually. And remember, spirit, soul, we mean this in the mind too. And so 
that's actually super interesting from a Catholic theological perspective because do people remember what it's like, what people are like in the afterlife? They are not married, right? And why is that? Well, because souls don't have gender, right? This is why people always talk about we, uh, the tradition was just a gender souls feminine, even though they don't have gender. So why would that be? Well, it turns out because the female male resides in the material, which is the body, which is super interesting to think about. Um, yeah, <laughs> this is how come it leads to these drastic behavior differences. It's as drastic as the difference between a guy who's really tall and a guy who's really short or a guy who's really strong or a guy who's really sickly, right? Like those are going to cause behavioral differences, right? Because you're going to behave differently because you're a short person or a tall person or a weak person or a strong person like that. In the same way, you are going to act very differently because you are a male or a female. Um, of course, we can get into theologically, why did God create man this way? And it turns out because there's this whole image of the relationship between God and creation in the relationship between man and woman, because we could talk about because maleness is associated with the lover and femininity associated with the beloved. And so what, how, what is the relationship? It's that the beloved moves the lover without itself being moved. And this is what causes... You know, this is how things are moved by inspiration, and this is why the act of creation for God is one and the same with love, because God, remember, love is, there's just one metaphysical love that is manifest in all these different relationships, right? Which is also why I don't like the whole, oh, there's, for Greeks, there's four different words for love. Like, I hate that whole meme, um, because it, metaphysically, they're all actually the same. It's just this connect relationship between desire and the desired, uh, but on different levels right physically emotionally spiritually etc so what happens here is that it, within this image right because then that means creation and, and desire are one and the same for god god creates things by loving them into existence and so the male man and female offer a powerful and imminent image for the relationship between god and creation jesus and his church you know priest you know so 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 once you realize that that's what's so important there but metaphysically that's what's going on durga i hope that answered your question um is it ever okay to tell a girl an edgy joke again like i said how edgy are we talking here because i like some edgy jokes right but as long as, as they don't sort of break the you know they, they become you know sort of foolish or or uh, obscene um but you generally, you know, it's the, remember what I said, this is the first, the first principle, understanding a girl is a, that is fundamentally a human, right? It, so, so is it okay to tell her an edgy joke? When would you tell a friend an edgy joke? Like a guy, a guy who's a friend? Well, you wouldn't just tell a guy you just met an edgy joke that could come off rude or bad. Well, same thing. You wouldn't just tell a girl an edgy joke you just met, but you know, if you guys are friends and you've known each other and, you, and she understands you're a serious person, who, uh, you know, if, if the joke is, it has some uh, uh, bad connotations, if she knows you're not, you know, a racist or a sexist or whatever, then it's funnier, right? That's sort of my answer there. Um, what do I look for in considering whether a woman is interested, like general signs? Um, how would you know if a guy wants to be your friend? Like, how would you know if a guy wants to be your friend? Well, because he, he wants to hang out, he wants to do stuff together, he likes talking to you, stuff like that. Well, it turns out because women are humans, it's very similar. How do I know if a woman's interested? She talks to you more. She likes being around you. She likes doing things with you. Um, she wants to interact with you more. Um, and that's it. That's the big secret. That's how you know if a woman's interested because she does things that interested people do. <laughs> Let's see here. What are some other questions? If I do get a girlfriend and she's Catholic, does she get a pass to come in here? Sure. Okay, question. What if a girl is shy? Um, well, I mean, it's a vice like anything else. It, you know, it's... I don't know why I see this on the internet a lot. Guys will have this weird fetishization of shy girls. Um, 
I don't know if you've ever been around a shy person, but they're extremely frustrating to interact with. Um, and so I suspect people who think that have just never been around a shy person and tried to do literally anything with them. Um, they can often be incredibly embarrassing to take places because they can't do basic human interaction. Uh, yeah, no, I would just, I, I mean, I personally would just never, I wouldn't have the patience to, to be involved with a shy person. Uh, yeah, that would end badly. <laughs> So would having a plan laid out be a good sign when addressing my deficiencies? Oh yeah, I mean everything we do, right? Everything we do, we have to, we have to, you know, plan it out first and figure out our steps. You know, I mean there ain't nothing there. There's there's nothing else to it really. That's just a general part of becoming excellent at anything, right? Some foresight, research, thinking about it, things like that.